Earlier today, KTIV sat down with Nebraska Governor Pete Ricketts. In the special one-on-one -on -one interview, our Michaela Feldman asks him about several tragedies his state has faced, from the pandemic to the historic floods. Governor, thank you so much for sitting down with us today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on. So, so let's, let's start, start by talking about, of course, the pandemic, the vaccines, uh, top of mind for many people. Uh, what, as governor, what are you seeing? I know a lot of people have criticized the rollout. Well, we have seen a fairly steady supply of vaccines. Uh, I would say one of the things that's been kind of slowing us down is the federal pharmacy program, just by the nature of the way it works. Uh, these are the uh, pharmacies that are going to our long-term care facilities, and we had to bank vaccines with them. That counts against our allocation, but we didn't have control of them. And so uh, really, actually, today on the 28th, uh, Walgreens is supposed to finish up their last facility with the first round vaccine and then they'll be moving on to the second round. So as we work our way through that, I think you'll see uh, and we get some of those vaccines back, you'll see a pace of the vaccines even pick up even faster here in Nebraska. And you know, most of our local public health departments have been doing a really great job of getting vaccines out quickly. So for example, uh, here in Lincoln, Lincoln Lancaster did a mass vaccination center at the Pinnacle Bank Arena on last Friday. and. 28 or 2400 people got vaccinated. So when we got the vaccines, we get them into people's arms. We're hopeful that we'll see increased allocations as production ramps up. But so far, our supply has been pretty steady. Uh, many people started off the year of 2020 with some high hopes after the flooding of 2019. You know, we saw a lot of communities rebuilding. What lessons did we learn from that tragedy to be better prepared when historic weather hits again? Well, one of the things that came out of the flooding of 2019 is just the role of the Army Corps of Engineers played in that. In fact, there was a court judgment last month in, uh, I think it was Missouri, but talked about the role of the Army Corps of Engineers and what they've done around uh, the river that actually caused the flooding and that they actually took people's property by allowing the flooding without reimbursing them. Now, obviously, that's a court case that will continue to be in the courts for a while. But the point is that the Army Corps was found to be uh, guilty of causing some of this flooding. And so that's one of the things we need to continue to work with the Army Corps of Engineers as the state of Nebraska, the state of Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, about that river management to be able to make sure we're protecting people's property and people's lives first with regard to river management. When you mentioned property, property taxes, especially for farmers, has been something that you've pushed for, property taxes in general. What is it, why is that important and what do you, work do you believe still needs to be done with that? Well, property taxes has been the number one issue that people talk to me about as I travel around the state and has been ever since I started running for governor, you know, seven years ago. And so we made great step forward last year with LB 1107, which is going to significantly increase the amount of direct property tax relief from the state. However, what we've seen in previous years is that when the legislature and the governor work to provide tax relief from the state, that unless we control the growth of spending on the local side, that that relief gets eaten up and people don't see that relief. We want to make sure that relief goes into people's pockets. And that's why this year, working with Senator Linehan, we've introduced LR22CA, which is a constitutional amendment to limit how much your taxes can go up in a given year to 3% so that local entities can't take more than 3% additional from you in any given year so that that money that we're providing from the state actually goes into people's pockets. And then I want to ask you, what's next for you? Is there a plan for a Senate run coming up? Well, I'm going to be governor for the next two years, so I'm going to focus on being the best governor I can be for the next two years, and I'm going to worry about everything else after that. All right. Uh, and then we're halfway through your second term. What has been quickly your greatest accomplishment? Well, certainly one of the things we've done is a great job of serving the people of Nebraska in all of our different agencies, whether it's Health and Human Services or the Department of Motor Vehicles, the State Patrol, Department of Transportation. Um, you know, and you can just see all the examples of how we've done a, a great job of serving the people of Nebraska, the flooding we just talked about and how we had 27 bridges out and the Department of Transportation really worked with our contractors like Hawkins to get those bridges and those roads back up in, in operation for folks. So we've done a great job on that. Uh, we've made great steps with regard to property tax relief with 1107 that we passed last year. Still more work to do on that. We've made great steps uh, with regard to becoming the most military and veteran friendly state in the country. So we need to continue to work on that. You know, we got uh, passed our veterans tax relief package. They got half of what we needed last year. We're coming back this year to get the other half. So we, we just got more work to continue to do. But, uh, you know, it's really about making sure that we're providing those opportunities for the people in Nebraska and our families.
Governor, thank you so much for sitting down with us today. Great. Thank you very much.